let's talk about limiting beliefs and why you need to get rid of them if you want to create the life of your dreams, the life that your soul came here to live and embody. This is the life that you feel in your heart that you're meant for and that sometimes you might slip into a daydream about. But it's also, it is the life that sometimes when you're thinking about it, you start thinking about the reasons why that wouldn't work out or it just couldn't happen. That maybe other people could create something like that, but for you, it's just not practical or realistic. So all of the reasons why you can't have, do, or be the thing, the thing, you know, the thing, like the thing that's meant to be your thing, the thing that you know deep, deep, deep inside you're meant for. And I don't care how big, how incredible, how impossible it is. It's the thing. It's the thing your soul is calling you towards. So all the reasons why you can't have this thing, those are your limiting beliefs. Now, it's kind of crazy to think about, but we essentially operate like computers. We all have a system and our system is made up of our physical body, our mind, and our energy field or aura that where energy surrounds and permeates all of us. And running within this system, that means all three areas of the system, are various beliefs. And these beliefs are boxing us in or limiting us in our life. Now, limiting beliefs are always coming from lack frequency or the perspective of a lack. And lack is telling us there's not enough for everyone, that most people won't be able to have enough, and that the only people that get enough are the ones that lie, cheat, and steal. And so if you're going to be a good, wholehearted person, then you want to stay away from having big dreams, right? But what is actually true for all of us as God source embodied, as the entire universe in form, because that's what each of us is. We are divinity in form and we are from the angelic realm here on earth right now. Like we are not just humans and the idea that we're just humans is absolutely ludicrous. And abundance frequency is true for us, for each of us. But while we are wrapped up in a limiting belief based on a perspective of lack, we can't access the abundance frequency that is our birthright. Now, abundance frequency is not just about money. It is about money, but it's more a perspective or worldview or belief system, energetic system, where we see that there is enough for everyone because as creators, it's our thoughts that are creating the world outside of us as well as the world inside of us. And if things are lacking in this world, it's simply because there's not enough people creating from abundance frequency. And like what I can see is this is a very, very, very abundant world. The earth is very abundant and there's a lot more land here than we recognize. There's a lot more world here than we recognize. The, um, the matrix view of our world is that land is limited, right? That's not true at all. The whole picture of what our world looks like, um, that we have been programmed or sold by those in power is completely inaccurate and um, kind of laughable. There is plenty. The earth is 
not in trouble. In fact, the more that we are sold the earth is in trouble, it's because those who control the matrix want to keep us suppressed and keep us from expanding out to explore and find out how much earth is actually available to us and find out how really unlimited this earth is. And what's really, really interesting to me is right now we're in the transition from old earth to new earth. And I look at um, a transition that happened, I don't know, um, 500 or so years ago when people discovered the new world, right? They discovered North and South America. And it was like, what? We didn't know this giant, massive land existed. And I can see now that's part of the transition is we're going to be discovering new huge amounts of land on earth. Um, and it's, it's a very exciting time to be alive. Really exciting. Really, 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 really exciting. But anyway, we have to be aware of what beliefs that we have that are keeping us in a box of limits. Now, boxes or containers, and I'm speaking energetically, they aren't bad or wrong. In fact, to experience within the physical world, we do need boxes and containers. They are necessary. So a box or container holds what you're creating. So this can be a beautiful box, a box that you know all the angles of inside and out because you've created it. You've said, this is what I want to experience in the physical world. These are boundaries I'm going to set to enable this box to be secure and hold my creations. And within this box that you have consciously created, you can recreate the box whenever you want because you're the creator of the box. But if you are living in a box, not of your own conscious creation, but a box that's been created by all the thoughts of the people that have come before you, by the thoughts of your parents and, and your teachers and your friends and your family, you have no idea how to recreate the box and you're not in your creative power. And if this is where you are, it's okay. I used to be there too. There's no shame in this. It's part of our journey. You see, each of our souls is on a unique journey and it is a journey. It's a journey. We are not meant to just find out the truth. Okay. I am God embodied. I am, I create, and then like, boom, everything changes. And the reason is, is because we have all these layers of gunk, all of these past creations, and it's not just from this lifetime, it's from many previous lifetimes and incarnations that we just have all of these layers and we need to move these out so that clarity can come in so that we can start feeling and experiencing deeper what we are being guided to from within, right? So the limiting beliefs have to go. They have to go, but they can't go until you're aware of them. And you can't be aware of them until you start listening for them because limiting beliefs are subconscious. So subconscious means under the awareness of conscious. Now the shocking thing about limiting beliefs is that the average person spends about 95% of their waking hours in subconscious thoughts. Now, subconscious thoughts can have some positive thoughts in there, right? It could be maybe you were told your entire childhood, you're a great artist. And so now you have this subconscious knowing that I'm a great artist, right? But you have some beliefs in there. If you were raised anything like the average person, you have some beliefs in there about all the ways you can't, about all the ways you're not good enough. And to become aware 
of what these are, we have to spend some time listening for them. So this could look like meditation. It could look like asking for guidance and saying, what are my limiting beliefs? Or it could be picking the dream, whatever the dream is for you, whatever the thing is that you desire the most, and just starting to dream about it. And then just paying attention to what thoughts are popping up that are telling you you can't. Because while we all have this like desire to sit and visualize every day our big dream, right? And imagine it and feel the feelings of it. What happens for most people and what used to happen for me as well is while we're in there visualizing it, all of a sudden these, these thoughts of, but if I got this, this person might be hurt or I would have to handle this or I would have to deal with this. And all of these thoughts of worry and resistance start coming up. And all of a sudden it went from this idea of it's going to feel so good to spend 15 or 20 minutes just laying back, relaxing and, and visualizing about my dream. It turns out it actually felt pretty miserable. And then come the worries on top of that of, oh no, well, this is literally me attracting the energy of, of not believing this is going to happen. I'm no good at manifesting. I don't think I can do this. That's not what's going on. What's actually going on is you're highly psychic. And so when you start telling the universe, this is what I want to create. See, isn't it wonderful? The universe is like, oh, perfect. Okay. These are all the reasons that um, you're, or all the ways you're currently blocking the receiving of it. Because you are a psychic receiving and sending tower. So you're sending out this signal, this energy frequency of this is what I want. And the universe is instantly within a few seconds saying, perfect just clear out all this stuff first but you're seeing oh no i'm not holding the thought i'm not good enough none of that's going on you're just being shown what's not in alignment currently with that version of you the universe expecting you just to go ahead then and gently and easily release it no big deal right but it's a big deal because we haven't been taught how to do this so to understand how to do it First, you have to understand there are infinite ways to do it, literally infinite ways and more are constantly popping up. And the right way for you to release your limiting beliefs is very based on what your soul is guiding you to learn because there's no wasted energy, no wasted lessons in our soul's path. Every lesson has purpose. So you're not going to be asked to do a bunch of practices or learn a bunch of lessons that aren't in alignment with your soul's path. And in fact, if you're trying to do some sort of practice that's not in alignment with your soul's path, you're going to feel a lot of resistance to doing it. So just keep that in mind that I'm going to give you some guidelines here, but the most powerful thing for you to do is going to be asking within to be shown what are the best ways for me to release my limiting beliefs. I'm going to share with you what has worked beautifully for me, understanding that this has been my soul's path, but also part of my soul's path is that of teacher or guide. So everything that I've experienced in my life, I've experienced from the perspective now of understanding, I'm here to share that with others because the people who are brought to me are brought to me because our soul's paths are similar. And the things that I have to share and to teach will assist your soul's path. So keep that in mind as well. The fact that you're here is a good indication that starting with the methods I'm about to outline is going to be the correct starting place for you. Because again, there are no accidents, there's no coincidences, and everything is always happening for us. So the other thing to understand though, is that the release of these limiting beliefs, which you could also call the healing process, 
healing from feeling separate and unworthy and coming back into a feeling of belonging to all that is, a feeling of belonging to the universe and a feeling of being deeply worthy simply because you are um, God embodied, you are an important part of the universe. So this process of releasing or healing it's not meant to happen like this. And the reason is you're going to be healing lifetimes. And this takes time. And how long it takes depends on what's right for your soul's path. So some people will heal in a few days, in a few weeks. Some people will heal in a few years. And the timing actually doesn't matter at all because it's happening in divine timing. Divine timing means perfect time for you and your soul's path. So there's no reason to rush. And this is a big limiting belief or program that we are sold by the matrix energies and matrix controllers is that like we have to rush or we're going to be late. Hurry, 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 or you're going to be late. This is a big one we had to eradicate in our house. Um, I noticed we were doing that with our children when we were going to go somewhere because children are very much on divine timing. They're so leaned back. They're so like, it's totally fine if it takes 15 minutes to put on one shoe. It's totally cool. There's nothing to worry about. No rush. And my husband, Phil and I are like, let's, let's get these shoes on. Come on. We got to go. We have whatever, whether it's a doctor appointment, whether we're going to grandma's house, wherever we're going, it's like, we have the clock, right? And so Phil and I had to consciously talk about how, oh my gosh, we are literally programming them to rush and we can see how it's affecting them. And so instead of us choosing to program our children into the matrix we were programmed into, we chose to reprogram ourselves into this beautiful divine timing energy our children have. And yes, sometimes we wait 15 minutes for a shoe to go on, but there's actually a lot of beauty in that. There's so much beauty in slowing down and trusting that all is well in this slower pace of life. We have to understand now that our system again has three parts, right? Physical body, mind, and energy field. And that limiting beliefs exist in all three parts of our system and need to be released from all three parts of our system. And again, releasing is just the healing process. The healing process is another way to say bringing ourselves back to wholeness. So we're not recre recreating ourselves into something that we've never been before. We're just shedding all the layers that aren't our deepest truth so that we can uncover the diamond within the part of us within that is this soul embodied and God source that is just pure, beautiful, loving, joyful energy. So that's what we're doing here. We are uncovering so that we can be who we really are again. If you're having any trouble discovering what your limiting beliefs are, what I want you to do is um, you're going to try to visualize it or sit with the thing that you're manifesting. And as soon as you're aware of, oh, that's a reason why I can't, or that's a reason that would worry me about having this, write it down and do this for a few minutes every day until you feel like you've written everything down. Once you've got everything written down, you've got your list of limiting beliefs. I want you to take out another piece of paper and write down the opposite of each belief. This is what you, the new beliefs you're creating. And again, understanding the limiting beliefs are existing in lack frequency. While the new beliefs you're creating, you want those to exist in abundance frequency. So if the old belief is, I don't have enough money, the new belief is, I have plenty of money. And you aren't worried about how you bring the new belief into reality. The how is never your job. The how is up to the universe. It's your job to have the thoughts that are in alignment with what you want. And that's it. The universe rearranges to match your thoughts, your energy, and your physical presence. 
So you're going to go through each one and switch it from lack to abundance. If the lack was I'm too old, the abundance is I'm exactly the right age. And you take as long as it needs to do it. Like I said, this is not about rushing. For some of you, this will feel easy. For others of you, there'll be a lot of resistance to move through. And that's okay. It's perfect no matter how it's unfolding for you. It is unfolding divinely. And you're learning exactly what you need to learn on your path. And there truly is no rush because once you start doing this, you're coming into alignment. Even though you don't yet have those things, you are literally following the guidance of the universe. The universe who, when you said, I want to manifest this, the universe is like, perfect, release this. So the universe has told you what to release. And now you are in alignment because you're doing that, no matter how long it takes you to move through it. Because even to hold these practices, it takes releasing other things that are taking up your time so that you now have space to hold these practices. After you've got your piece of paper with all of your new beliefs, you're going to keep that under your pillow. And, and if you don't want to keep it under your pillow, that's fine. You can get a nice little decorative box and keep it in a decorative box on your shelf. But keep it somewhere and you don't even have to look at it again. It's not about looking at it again. Um, but you're going to either burn, if you burn it, do it safely outside or rip up the limiting belief paper while you repeat to yourself, I release, I release, I release. Okay. So this is now moving the limiting beliefs out of your mind and you immediately want to replace these limiting beliefs by with the new beliefs you've created that are in abundance frequency by repeating each of those new beliefs three times. Then you're going to do the same thing, but within your energy field. So you're going to call highest vibrational light into your energy field and say, I dissolve with this highest vibrational light. So you're just saying, calling highest vibrational light into my energy field. And with this highest vibrational light, I dissolve all of these limiting beliefs that are blocking the creation of XYZ, whatever your creation is. And then you're going to say, I create and activate within my energy field. And you're going to read out all of your new beliefs. Now, what this release and recreation process will do within your mind and energy field is begin to dredge up all of the physical um, places that these limiting beliefs have been stored. So these are like the physical roots. And in the coming days and weeks, you might have some weird aches and pains within your body. And I don't want you to go run for the aspirin. I want you instead, when you recognize one of these aches and pains coming up, I want you to go in a room, turn off the lights, turn off all the noise and distractions, and just focus in on that part of your body where the ache or pain showed up. And I want you to talk to it and say, why, where is this pain coming from? What, what is this pain here to teach me? What do I have to do to release this pain? And just focus in on it and be open. And whatever psychic sense for you is most active is how the response is going to come through. And don't worry if you feel like I don't have any psychic senses activated. We all do. We just aren't aware of it. Memories, that's psychic senses. Everything, we are literally like so psychic. We couldn't turn it off if we wanted to. We just don't recognize it. Um, so you might have a memory pop up. You might hear something. You might just like have this inner knowing for some reason that doesn't even make sense, right? You might actually smell something that triggers a memory. Um, so whatever it is, just lean into trust that you're not crazy, that this is actually connected to this feeling, okay? And then what you're going to do is Forgive yourself for whatever this memory is, whatever this thing is connected to that, that you're hearing that is. So what happens is when we're younger, 
and other people are throwing their beliefs at us and we're like, okay, and we're just soaking them up. They're often grown up beliefs and we're little kids. And we don't know how to deal emotionally with these grown up beliefs. It feels scary. If, if a grown up says to you, oh, there's, you know, we don't have that much money. We, we can't buy all these toys because we just don't have enough money. And, we're, and you're like, oh, we don't have enough money. Are we going to be okay? Am I okay? Am I safe? And we don't know how to deal with that. And maybe the grown up didn't mean we might not be okay. Maybe the grown up just meant I'm not going to spend my money on toys right now. Maybe it wasn't an, indi an indication to the grown up that there was dire financial situation, but maybe as a four year old, you didn't recognize that. So, there are always emotions associated with these limiting beliefs. The feelings of like, I'm not good enough. I'm scared. I'm not safe. Things aren't going to be okay. And as little kids, we don't know how to process them. So it, processing looks like feeling an emotion, sort of like a storm coming in and understanding that's just an emotion. That's just a storm rolling by. And I can just observe it. I don't have to identify with that emotion. I understand I'm not the emotion. So I'm not scared. I'm experiencing fear. So that's what this healing process leads you to. No longer associating um, identity with emotions, but instead understanding emotions are just storms that pass through and they are just passing through. But as a child, we don't know that. And for many of us as adults, I I went through the healing process to learn that lesson, but as an adult, I didn't know it either. So when an emotion happens, we identify with it. And because we don't know how to move it out, we store it within and it gets stored in the physical body as aches and pains that show up as we get older. So when we focus in then on this ache and pain that is popping up and we're saying, show me, how to move you out, show me how to heal you. We are shown the memory of the root of how this originally got stuck in our body because we didn't know how to deal with the emotion at the time. So the way to move it out is to now show, I know how to deal with the emotion. And so we learn how to do that. And this, the path to this is always forgiving ourselves. And forgiving other people is beautiful, but that's much further along on the enlightenment path. Before you've learned to forgive yourself, because everything always starts within, we're not ready to forgive others. So what you want to do is ask yourself, okay, how am I blaming myself for this situation? Where do I feel shame or guilt? And some of these situations feel kind of benign, but some of them it feels like somebody was really attacking us. And wherever you are on that spectrum, it really doesn't matter. The only question is, what, what am I holding shame or guilt around? You might say at first, well, I'm not blaming myself. I'm blaming this other person. You're always blaming yourself. We are always blaming ourselves for not knowing then what we know now. So if somebody else did something awful to us, the blame often looks like, why didn't I stop them? Why didn't I say this? Or why didn't I do this instead? If I would have done this instead, maybe it wouldn't have happened. So we have to find, like, how are we blaming ourselves? And when we find that, we want to then do a few things. We want to ask God's source within us, the universe, to show us the lesson we're meant to learn through this. And then that might take a few days, but it will come through. And then we want to ask for the lesson to be fully embodied so that we don't need to continue to repeat it over and over again. Um, and in many cases, these will be lessons that you've been working on for lifetimes. And all of a sudden, just by setting the intention to embody it fully, you'll be able to get out of the cycle of repeating it, which is so freeing and so cool. So then the next step is to say, I forgive myself. And you repeat it three times. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. 
then you're going to release whatever shame and blame you have been heaping on your younger self. So you're just going to repeat three times, I release, I release, I release. And while you're saying that, you're thinking about whatever the shame or the blame or the guilt is. Then you're going to send love to that version of you. And really you're sending love to all versions of you. So you're going to say, I send love to all versions of myself, especially the younger version of me that I have been blaming. And then you're going to repeat three times. I love you. I love you. I love you. And last, you want to send gratitude to the universe or God source within you for bringing you this lesson and this healing release. So just repeating three times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this has been a lot. But what I have told you here today is so freaking powerful. Don't discount it. Watch this again. Take notes because I could easily like sell this for thousands of dollars in a course. And I do. I go a lot deeper in depth. But this is so freaking powerful. This is everything. This is the path. I love you.